Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper, and we are back in my kitchen to do something that other people have been asking about, and actually customers ask me all the time, which is how to take care of tin linings at home. I've done videos on what not to do with tin linings and what not to cook and not how and how not to ruin it and how quickly you can ruin tin linings, but I haven't done how to take care of them at home. And so today's just going to be how I wash and care for the tin linings of copper pans. Everybody kind of has their own methods or preferences or opinions about this, so please feel free to share what works for you down in the comments below so everybody can learn from each other. But I'm gonna show you what I do, knowing you know that um, how quickly tin linings change and oxidize. I have a pan that I just recently retinned, so you can see how I take care of a brand new tin lining. And then uh, that will remain the same even as time goes on and it slowly oxidizes and gets darker. The care is the same. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how I clean and take care of tin linings after I have cooked in them. So here is a newly tinned skillet that had the morning eggs in it and the kids are off to school and it is now time for me to cook or clean what I've cooked, scrambled eggs. So I wait till the pan is obviously cool enough for me to hold, um, it, if the pan is still pretty warm, um, that like you can't hold it with your own hand, I would recommend waiting just so that you don't, you're trying to avoid immediate temper changes. So if this is still really hot, like so warm that I couldn't hold it with a bare hand, I would be like, oh, I'm gonna wait so that the metal has a little bit of time to cool off. So obviously this is now cool enough to touch and I am okay putting in in my leaky sink that needs a new o-ring um i'm going to just do dawn dish soap any type of soap um that you would use for washing dishes that's gentle you don't want abrasive soaps and then i will go with like a i'll use warm water not too hot i'll kind of go back and forth like i started with cold then i went to hot then i started with cold and i'm going to get this like to a medium and I'm doing eggs because I feel like eggs are the hardest um, because people assume that they are, you know, these are non-stick. So, you know, my fake non-stick pan also. So I'm gonna just kind of get a feel for, okay, it's coming up. If it's not coming up a lot, I'm gonna switch to warmer water. And I'm gonna let that get in the pan with the soap. As the soap is getting started, might add more, a little bit more. I'm not gonna let the water sit in the pan too long. You can if it's really stiff, stuck on. And then I'm going to use any type of dish cloth. So here is, oh, that's not waste water. Here is like one of those knit ones, like my mom knits these, they're soft cotton. You can also use something soft. So this is like an old burp rag from when I had babies. Um, and so they're just softer and more absorbent, but really ideally you're using these softer cloths and warm water with soap. And this is the same whether or not you're, um, I'm gonna pull it off just cause then it's easier to show. The goal is you're using warm water you're using Dawn dish soap and you're using a soft cloth and you can let this soak for a little while if you want but like as you can see even with just a little bit of gentle rubbing I'm getting all that egg we don't cook with oil here I know people go oh you gotta fry that egg in oil I'm like I'm not frying an egg in oil because we don't do a lot with oil here um but anyway so you're just using this soft cloth and you can be, I'm going slow so you can see me removing it, but just a little bit of soap, a little bit of water, um, and a soft cloth and some elbow grease. And pretty quick here, you're starting, you can see through the water that everything is coming clean. Once the pan is pretty much clean, I rinse it in just some lukewarm to cool water. Make sure I get all the food out. Just, you don't want any food sitting in there if you can help it. 
And then to dry again, you can use a dry version of like a softer cloth. Um, I have this one here, so I'm just gonna use it, but any type of um, softer dish rag um, or dish, uh, you know, dish cloth. You want cotton, cotton's gonna be your best bet for keeping it dry and not having anything abrasive scrape. Um, if like the towels have embroidery, sometimes they're hard and they might scrape your tin. So I go for a cloth that doesn't have any type of roughness or um, things like that. And then obviously, not that I, we need to do the back, but same thing goes here. You don't wanna scratch the copper. So the same soft rag. Ta-da! Anyway, so there you have it. You have a clean pan. Um, okay, so if you have any thoughts or questions on that process, it's really that simple. That's really all you ever wanna do um, when you have a tin lined copper. There are some times where uh, things will get stuck um, and, and nasty and um, boiling the water with the Dawn dish soap in the pan, like fill the whole thing up, put some Dawn dish soap, boil it, take it off, that should loosen the food up and then do the same thing with the soft cloth and the Dawn dish soap in the water. And that's really all you need. Um, until they invent a dishwasher, uh, dishwashing soap that is not abrasive to copper and tin and pits and makes them yucky, it's kind of really the way you can take care of your tin linings at home. Um, it's the old school way, it never was broke, so we're not gonna fix it. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have anything else you would like me to do or show, please let me know, put it in the comments, um, and don't forget to subscribe. And you know, I post about twice a month, so it's not like I, I'm trying to fill your inbox, but um, find me on, on Facebook, Instagram, under House Copper, or pick up a copy of Copper, Iron, and Clay wherever books are sold. And then I guess I will see you next time.